The most ancient family of the superfamily Elephantomorpha were mastodons, scientifically known as mammut. As a family, mammut today has been separated from other proboscideans for 28.4 million years since the later Ligocene epoch. Mammutids also didn't go extinct in the distant past, actually pretty recently. The first genre in the family Mammutidae was the genus Lossocodon, with just one known species, Lossocodon lossodicus, which lived in the late Oligocene epoch in northwestern Kenya. The dental mesoware of this particular species shows that this animal was likely a browser, feeding on higher growing vegetation. Lysocodon seems to share a fair bit in common with later relatives of itself, including other genera in the family, which are also thought to have been browsers. However, just like all other proboscidean families I've discussed so far, Lysocodon, being the beginning member of the family Mammutidae, was pretty small, only being around the size of a large cow or a medium-sized hippo or rhino. Eozygodine moritensis is likely the direct descendant of Lysocodon, as when fossils of this species appear, Lysocodon disappears, possibly because of a related ancestry. Eozygodon was also a bit more widespread than Lysocodon, with remains not only being found in Kenya, but also Namibia and Uganda, likely meaning that the species had a much greater range, as, as we all know, Uganda and Namibia are not that close to each other. The first mastodon, or member of Mammutidae, to have more than one species in the genus is Zygolophodon, living from the middle to the late Miocene epoch. This genus was also very widespread, living in Tunisia, Kazakhstan, Pakistan, and parts of Europe, possibly even into the central US. Zygolophodon is also pretty major and possibly being the ancestor of the genus Mammut, or the mastodons. However, first, the genus grew massive. Zygolophodon, along with its direct ancestor, both probably weighed around 16,000 kilograms, rivaling both Paleoloxodon nematicus and Paraceratherium for a specific title of the world's largest land mammal to have ever existed. Zygolophodon was very similar to, and possibly ancestral to, Mammut borsoni which appeared around the same time Zygolophodon fossils disappear. Other adaptations with Zygolophodon, which seem to line up, include incredibly long tusks of up to 5 metres, along with a similar range from China to Ukraine and Greece. Before becoming the famous American mastodons, Mammut borsoni was a possible ancestor of the genus Sinomammut from China living in the Miocene Epoch between 12 and 11 million years ago. The genus is known from very fragmentary remains. Next, let's move on to my favourite extinct proboscidean, the American Mastodon, Mammut Americanum, which is actually the reason I decided to make this video this early. During the last ice age, or the last glacial maximum, the American Mastodon lived from northern Mexico to near the Arctic Circle, American Mastodon were large animals living in warm climates, especially in Mexico and Florida, so it's unlikely they had that shaggy of a fur coat, unlike woolly mammoths. It is likely that more northern populations may have had a fur covering, but southern populations would have looked a bit more like elephants, just a tad. American Mastodon would have been especially common around the Great Lakes region, as this is where there's a pretty high density of their fossils. This is where they would have seen many other animals known to us today and not too long ago. If they were alive today, the American Mastodon would likely be the largest land animal on Earth, as some individuals can grow to 325 centimetres tall and weigh up to 11.1 tonnes, rivaling the size of even modern African bush elephants. The American Mastodon seemingly had a much shorter lifespan than modern proboscideans as well, with the oldest individuals aged between 50 and 60 years, at bare minimum five years shorter than modern elephants. The American Mastodon is also pretty unique in not of actually going extinct due to climate change, as its preferred forest habitats had actually expanded by this time. So really it should be more common today, but they're extinct, so why? 
Once arriving in the continent of North America through the Bering Land Bridge, it is likely that the Clovis people, or the Clovis culture of Homo sapiens, hunted and killed off these animals to extinction, as there is some evidence of this in the fossil record. The American Mastodon also likely coexisted with other proboscideans, like the Colombian Mammoth, possibly the Woolly Mammoth if it lived that far north, and the final proboscidean I'm about to talk about. Mammut Pacificus, or the Pacific Mastodon, lived in what is today California during the Pleistocene Epoch. What is likely is that a population of American Mastodons migrated here during possibly the Middle Pleistocene Epoch, before being isolated from the rest of America, and so diversifying into their own species. Unfortunately, like so many other families of proboscideans, these animals went extinct during the Pleistocene Epoch to the Holocene transition, around 11,700 years ago. All we can do now is just appreciate their distant cousins that are still roaming the Earth today.